Hey guys, GreatGamer34 here. Today, um, I'm gonna do a finishing video on this integrated circuit CPU, show you guys how it works and how to do things with it, and give you guys a warp so you guys can come on and play with it here. I will also save it as a schematic and put the schematic as a download. And so here we go. So first thing you'll notice is, well, it's a lot more finished than the last video showed anything of. So we'll come over here. This is the RAM. I'll just that's just 64 bytes of RAM. These are seven bytes of registers. Um, and this is the ALU over here. The ALU can shift, it can X and or, it can and, it can or, and it can add. So it's got an 8-bit adder, and then we have our multiplexer system set up here, which is what all these AND gates are for. And then it shares this, I guess this can be called a front side bus, I think that's what I used in the past for this name. And then it, tra it transmits data all the way over and into our register systems over here. As you can see, looks like I'm missing a few repeaters, so those will be added on. Uh -huh. Also, we have uh, decoders right here. These, these lines coming up right here go into decoders to control RAM reads and writing. So it's got two reads and one writes, right? Which is why there's three decoders vertical right here. Um, and now here's the fun part on how to program it and what you can do with it. This is the instruction set. This will be in the schematic, but I don't think that it'll show up with the signs when you paste it into your world, so you might want to pay attention here. First one is add, second instruction is subtract, third one is or, fourth one is and, x and or, right shift, branch of equal to direct, branch of greater than direct, load word for memory, and store word for, to memory. That's all this is capable of doing. So you'll see, this is more stuff. ADDR stands for address, and then JMP stands for jump, so one's going to be a jump address, and the other one's just going to be an address in RAM. Um, argument A, argument B, and saving register. I'm pretty sure that's how they're hooked up down there, I'm not sure, but now let's go see the ROM. So what you'll see here is everything is really thrown together as small as possible. Um, yeah. So here's our first line of ROM. It's color coded. It should match up there. So th these are the uh, immediates. This is a register argument. This is another register argument, and this should be a register write. It might, that may not be correct though. Um, yep. This is that was register write. This is read B, and then this is read A. So there's more signs over here telling you if you're unaware. And then we have our 4-bit opcode in red all the way over here. And you'll see that our opcode, yeah, we have some busting underneath there. This opcode only goes to, this is the decoder for it right here. So this is where our opcodes get decoded. And this is where the ALU ops go. And then the other ops right here, this is all branching logic built in right here. Um, these are flags for branching. And yeah. So that's how that works. And now I'll show you guys the PC. So then you can actually start programming this yourself. So right here is the clock. And here's a solid state PC that I built with branching. And you'll notice that right now we have data. We have a 30 being outputted. So as soon as I clock it just one more time by doing this, It'll go to 31, which means all of them are on right here. And if I clock it, clock it one more time, they're all going to turn off. And so they're all off. So now basically this is the clock. So if you want to actually start the clock, flip that down and give this a flick on and off again. You use the button there, but I was too lazy. Now the clock is running. Now you'll notice that there's nothing being output into here, because this isn't on. So now that that's on, the PC will start incrementing, going up, and you'll see that this is incrementing in, whoops, this decoder is not working. Let's 
space between the sides. You'll see that these lines are actually turning off as it goes. And it's just going through the lines. Now there's 15 lines here, so that means there's four bits. There's five bit lines here, so if you want to add another 15 lines of ROM, you can. And then there's even another <coughs> bit right here. If you wanted to make the PC one bit larger, you could hook this up for the branching bit and then have up to 64 or 63 program lines. That was a lot of program lines, so I only kept it um, 14. 15, my bad. And as you'll see, it's still counting up. And it's as simple as stopping the clock like that. You see the stop, and, and then just disabling that right there. Um, branches work by, if it gets branch data, if it gets an instruction to branch, it'll come in, it'll turn off, allow these uh, comparators to go through, and then it'll flood these, it'll clock it right here, just into this torch instead, instead of going through the monostable. It'll also disable these torches here from propagating up a signal. So that's how branching works. And yeah, this thing is complete. Now, as I said, there's nothing programmed on it now, that's more for you to do. Because this is more of a proof of concept, uh, just to learn basic uh, circuits. So, subscribe and see you next time.